Hi, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert, and I was asked how do I pimp plugins, or how does one pimp their plugins. Now, it's only available on certain plugins, and in particular, the ones it's only available on are, if you come into your drop-down here, to either multi-channel or multi-mono, is the Avid list here, this lot. Now, it may be possible on other plugins, but I've definitely got it working on all of these. So, for example, if we go to the Sans Amp now, which is the amp, it's now Sans Pimp there with a Marshall uh, amp head and a Marshall cab. It's all a bit silly. It doesn't change the sound at all, but it's just a bit of fun if you want to do it. Somebody was saying, how do I do it? So what we're going to do is I'm going to do it to D-verb. Now, to find them first, you've got to actually find the stuff you're going to work with. And if you come to your Mac drive, this is on a Mac, of course. Uh, you might be able to do this on a PC as well. If you're a PC owner, if you can put in the location of where these live then tell us and we'll add it we'll just add it as a comment to youtube so i'm going to go to my hard drive mine's an ssd avid ax plugins and there they are so the first thing you want to do is make a copy of whatever you're going to pimp because in case you break it or screw it up so right mouse click and i've duplicated it and i've made a copy here down on my desktop and then the next thing you want to do is you need to right mouse click on the plugin. It'll look like this, and it'll say show package contents. Click on that, and then inside there, it'll all be collapsed down. You'll have one called resources. Open that. Then in here are two things. There's the XML document, which is the GUI XML, which you can edit sizes and positions and stuff like that. And there's the images. So we're going to do a really simple one first. We're not going to do any of the, the, the GUI XML work. And if you open that, you can open that with some like text wrangler or something like that, which is what I'd use on, on the Mac. And you can open that and have a look inside it. And that just tells you exactly where things are going to be. Very straightforward. The X and Y position and the width and the height and stuff like that. So we could actually make the GUI bigger or smaller and stuff like that. So if you really, really took some time, you could make this into anything you wanted within reason. But what we're going to do is we're going to change this background make it blue or something so you go to images and there's the images folder for this big knob and if you can imagine this big knob has an image for every time you move it so it's not just one knob that then just changes that's that's a png here you look here if, if i go through them you'll see that it's just stepping through them for every position that it goes to i think which is 90 64 and then there's the the, uh, the clipping path as well for it. So what we're going to do is change the background. So we want to come in and we go for, there's the background stereo. There it is. So I'm going to open that with Photoshop. And there's the background now. And I can change that. Now remember, I'm working in this plugin at the moment, not the original one. So I could do a number of things. I could go in, for example, I could do something as simple as change the name on there. Or I could go in and change the tint of it. So we could go in and change the tint. Let's do that as an easy one. So I'm going to go mode adjustments and I go hue and saturation. I'm using Photoshop. You might have a different thing. So we could then go in. So okay, we'll make those already blue. We'll make them green instead. Change the lightness of it. So let's do that. Let's just do those two for now. We could colorize the whole GUI like that. So I make it green, for example, and press OK. Then I need to save that again. So it's just simply a case of save. So we now have the original one replaced with the one we've done. Then what we need to do is make sure that we have a backup of the original that we've created, AX plugins, Dverb. What I'm going to do for now is move that out of there. I'm going to come in here. You shouldn't really do this with Pro Tools open, so I'm going to close that for a second. Get rid of that. And then I need to drag the copy that I created. Just name that as D-verb. Oh, sorry, that needs to be, let's call that D-verb safe. I need to rename this as D-verb. Just by clicking on it. Close your copy of Pro Tools. Let's just do that anyway. You shouldn't really mess around with, with plugins when you've got Pro Tools open, so slap me on the hand for that. Let's drop this in here, replace that. It's moved it in. So let's reopen Pro Tools now. So there we've got Pro Tools open again now. So let's go, multi-channel plugin, Avid, 
Dverb, and there we have a Pimp plugin. Everything still works, of course, but now it's got a green background. Looks like something from uh, Outer Space or Mac DSP. But if you spend time, of course, you can do what you like with it. You can pimp it as much as you like. You could make it look like a, a Yamaha SPX90 if you really took the time. It's entirely up to you. But you asked me how to do it. That's how you do it. It's a bit of fun. And uh, if you want to have a unique version of Pro Tools with these AX plugins, then that's how you do it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.